Of course, kind of goes without saying, ensure wall drilling will not compromise any studs, plumbing, uh, electrical wires, etc. And we're going to take our template here, and you can see it here. And, and I'll actually, when I'm through using it, I'll, I'll pass it around if you guys want to look at it. Uh, the template makes it pretty easy. Um, it shows the actual footprint, footprint of the product. You cut it out of the back of the box, which I've actually already done here. And you have a shaded area here where this arc is. The pilot bit of your three inch hole saw, as long as that pilot bit lands inside this arc, you're fine. Um, so you've got some flexibility. The actual exhaust will rotate and move. So as long as you can get your pilot bit anywhere in this arc, you'll be fine. Um, and then, uh, so, so it gives you t room to get around any studs or anything else that may be behind the wall. Um, I'll bring this in a little bit closer. We also have, and you can see it up here, I've got two holes here as well. This is what's going to mount the product to the wall. These two holes here, and that would just be like an eighth inch bit, just a pilot bit there just to go through the wall. So what I want to do here is I will take this pilot bit, I'm going to make sure I'm lined up where I want to be. If I had a pilot bit for a, um, for a drill, and that's what I would do here, uh, preferably one long enough to go all the way through the wall. If you use an extension, and you would just drill right through, I'm losing my audio here, it sounds like. You would just drill right through here, anywhere. I'm gonna go right here at the bottom. Uh, that's the lowest I would ever wanna go, and go right through here. But I could do it anywhere in here. And then I'd also take like a 1 8 inch bit, and I would drill through here, and I would drill through here as well. And then I would actually take my hole saw and drill a hole, and we, of course we've already got a hole drilled here. Um, and I'm gonna pass this around if you wanna look at it a little bit closer. I do wanna note one thing. When you cut this out, you actually see this, and I've had guys, there's a couple of things. Guys don't, don't actually take into account the bottom of, of the product. You should notice how I've got this folded back. I've also seen guys actually cut it on this line here, and if they cut it on this line, then they're not accounting for the feet. So um, this is forgiving, but if you get right on the edge, on one of these edges, and then you've also screwed up your template, you could get into a little bit of trouble. So um, if, I'll just set this here. If anyone wants to take a look at it, you can. So what we're gonna do is I mentioned, we're gonna take a longer drill bit. This is what I would certainly recommend and I'm gonna go all the way through the wall. Um, on this side, and I'll back up here, where my bit comes all the way out. Then I can take my hole saw, the three inch hole saw, or three and one eighth inch hole saw, either one of those, um, and I'm going to go through the front, and then I'm gonna go around to the back, and go through the back, and I've seen guys try to go all the way through on one side, and that's no fun, yeah. Get an amen from the choir on the back row, so. Um, <clears throat> when you go through this wall, uh, you want to do it either level or have a two inch pitch toward the outside. Or, uh, not two inch, a two degree pitch rather, toward the outside. So keep, keep that in mind. Remember the two holes that I created right here? Uh, that's for a mounting bracket that I'm going to use. And um, I'm going to go ahead and get that out now. See, I haven't even opened this yet. This was fresh out of the box. Any volunteers? Yes, sir. Yes. No, the question is uh, that pitch, of course, is for any possible condensation that would be, uh, you know, to drain outward. I've never had any complaints. First of all, if you're going right through this wall, you're really not going to have any condensation. Number one, because the BTU rate is it, it's just really not that large. Um, the efficiency rate is in the mid 80s, so there's a potential to create some condensation. You're not creating just a ton of condensation. If you use a long vent extension, that's when you can get into having maybe a little bit more condensation. But I've never had any complaints on any kind of staining or anything like that, so. All right. Um, I was hoping you were volu volunteering when you raised your hand. Why don't you come on up here and give us a hand here? All right. That's what you get for asking a question. No. 
Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, it's like I'm dropping out again. I'm going to take this mounting piece here, and you can see it in the, in the, in the, uh, on the slide. And I've already got the, the um, hose, holes drilled. I'm going to give that to you. I'm just going to mount it right here. And there's your screwdriver. No cordless? No cordless today. Um, my prob probation officer said that I couldn't have any more electric tools, at least at, unless till my probation is over. So a uh, couple weeks. Uh, no, no cordless today. So, of course, it is pretty simple. We've already got our holes drilled, so it shouldn't take that long. So. Now, there's no template for the electrical. Um, it, let's talk about that while he's doing this. I've got the electrical on the side. Uh, you can put the electrical wherever you want. If it already exists, of course, you would want to, you could use an existing electrical. Just make sure you're going to keep your code inspector happy on that one. And, and what I mean by that, I'm going to talk about the gas line as well on this subject, is some code inspectors would want that electrical on the outside not b totally behind the product. When you get this product totally assembled, it's, there's not going to be access around the back without removing a plate. And some code inspectors would not, you know, you know, they would not like that. They would want the electrical to be available. They would want the shutoff valve for the gas line to be available. So keep that in mind. Um, so I've actually got it on this one on the outside. When we have this installed, you'll see you can get to it. So in case our code inspector wants a means of, of a disconnection in that fashion. So, all right. Doesn't look quite level. Huh. Do a little <laughs> Tilt your head that way; it'll be fine. Um, all right. So we got our piece back in in here. We we appreciate that. Um, now, while you're up here, we can do this. We want to get our um, our product ready before we even get it into place. We want to get it ready for um for um installation. So we're going to start to prepare our gas line. Of course, we're not going to tighten everything down today, but just to kind of show you. And again, there's. I'm just airing to the side of what your code inspector may or may not do. I'm going to go ahead and put a drip leg right underneath the product. And I've got, already got it kind of halfway assembled. So um, if you want to go ahead and just get that in here. Uh, say Teflon tape? Yeah, we would say Teflon tape. Um, not going to do it on this one right now, but of course you would want Teflon tape on the product. Preferably Teflon tape over pipe dope. So go ahead and get that in there and um, and I'm gonna, we're going to bring that, we'll um, bring that around. I'm going to have it around on this side just for now. Um, and we would crank that down if we were needed to. I'm not going to put anything else uh, on here just yet. We're going to come back to that. What we're ready to do now, though, once we get this on here, and the reason why we put this on here now is because I'm ready to put my backspacers on. And I wanted to get this on here before, you know, I get this backspacer on here so I get it tightened down. So what I'm going to do now is go with a backspacer. And you have two of these. Of course, they are dependent on what side that you need to go on. And this is for that side. If you look, it's hard to see. You can come up here, too. I've got two hooks, um, the top and the middle, and then one at the very bottom. Let's go ahead and lift it out of this styrofoam. Just, just, just knock it, knock it out of there. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that's the rest of our hardware. I'll take that. Okay. Thank you, sir. We'll go ahead and hook those on. You'll do that side. I'll do this. And then you'll have a single screw at the bottom. And we'll open our screw kit up. And you've got different screws. I showed you the screws earlier uh, in the directions. It spells out pretty clearly which screws go where. And I'll put the rest of them up here. And then we'll do this side. These are sheet metal screws, and the easiest way to deal with these is to get it started, go backwards until you hear the screw or feel the screw fall in, and then go forward. Kind of goes without saying, but that way you don't fight it. We've got these in place. Now, we're not going to put the top spacer on just yet. 
I want to do that's going to actually be one of the last things that we do. So we'll come back to that here in just a second. And we'll keep rolling. In our kit, we're going to give you two tie wraps, okay? One's longer than the other one. You see here, and it says mount, use a longer tie wrap here, and you do not cut this piece here. This is a balanced system, and if I cut this hose, I'm going to uh, create a, a pressure, pressure differential as it pulls through the product. You, don't, you never want to cut this. Even though it looks like it's too long, um, do not cut it. All you want to do is take your tie wrap and just feed it down through here. We do this, and, and I would get it started the wrong way. Try that once again. Okay. All right. I would get this started, and I would not tighten it down all the way until we uh, have it into place. So go ahead and get it started like that. And that's normal. I know that look, may look a little bit strange, but that's okay, what you're seeing here. 